All Africa Poker Channel supports responsible gambling. No under 18s are allowed to gamble. Gamble responsibly. Winners know when to stop. National Responsible Gambling Toll Free Helpline 0800 006 008. Pigs Peak Casino is a Swaziland licensed casino. Previously on All Africa. Welcome back to Pigs Peak Casino. It's the All Africa Poker Tournament. It's episode two of 2010. With me, Caitlin Fox. Thank you, Dave. Awesome to be here. Let's go and see what Neil has to say. Let's quickly catch up with what's going on. We started, as I say, with 119 players, as traditionally is the case. We didn't lose too many last night. 116 do battle this morning, but the tournament has progressed already to a level where we have quite a few changes to the blinds and the antis have been introduced. So last night when we closed, we had 200, 400 small and big blind. This morning that starts at 300, 600, and the antis are up from 25 per player to uh, sorry, 50 per player to 100 per player. So we're getting straight into it. Lots to look forward to. Um, early reports are that some of the uh, seasoned players have some big chip counts, but I want to welcome a few people to uh, the main event. Of course, we've got previous winners, and uh, they're all scattered around. Ray Rami, by the way, has begun looking for a second All-Africa pretty well. They tell me he's on something like 137,000 chips this morning. Plenty of defending champions. Vessel Jacobs is also here, so we're lo looking for Vessel for a good show. But as you know, my money's on a couple of my favorite players which I'm going to tell you about in a little bit of time. Straight into the chip count before we get started today. Way up on top is Nicola Zakim, previous champion, and another previous champion, Ray Rami. A lot of big names on the leaderboard. Hold up, baby. Nicola <laughs> Zakim, our previous champion, 165. Here is your chip count, and look at that. Ryan Brower has joined us at the feature table. But look at this feature table. It's Suku, it's Sun, it's Kutsa, Kortlev, Jackson, Lolly Jackson's here. Daniel Lamberti, Stanley Topple, and straight to Lolly Jackson. Sunglasses and car shirts. I said the fashion has already improved. Much better than yesterday. 600 Lolly, away. Vessel, 600 Ryan. And here he is, our previous commentator from many years ago. Since he was a commentator, he's done exceptionally well in the international and local poker well, circles. He is probably and arguably the best poker player in South Africa, certainly the best tournament poker player in South Africa, Ryan Brower. And he raises up well with Queen 7, so he's looking to get involved early on. Unfortunately, with all those accolades, doesn't come good taste in sunglasses, well, apparently. Those sunglasses are awesome. I think they look like oh. they came out of a lucky packet. Anyway, so... He'll be called on this occasion by a pair of threes by Stanley Top Top Topple, very good online player. Next to him, Daniel Lamberti, very good online and live player. Next to him, Jay Suku, one of the top ten players in the country. Next to him, Booker, very good online player, previous final tablist. Next to him, Hawaii Sun, well, hasn't got a lot of showing in the world in terms of poker prowess, but one thing about Sun, he knows what's going on and he doesn't like to fold too much, that's for sure. And next to him also... Conrad Osiris Kutzer. So unlike the first table where we had one or two guys that were recognisable to the community, this could quite easily be a final table with the quality here. Definitely a professional table. Right, so Sun will take the lead as the flop arrives. He's got an ace nine. He hits the nine. Brower was the initial pre-flop raiser. So how is he going to react to what looks to be Sun betting out at the top pair here? Sun's got top pair, so I don't think what anyone bets is going to get him off the hand because he's the kind of player that once he's got a hand, he likes to see it through. Right, so now Brower was the pre-flop raiser. Sun has bet straight into him. Now, Brower's got two options here. It's either fold or raise. Now, fold, he's not going to do it, it looks like. He's, so he's announced re-raise. So obviously, Brower is uh, 
well, he's representing something like Queens, Kings or Aces here. You know, he's representing an over pair. And as I said, as we were going into the uh, footage, Sun, unfortunately, is not the kind of guy that is going to let go too easily. So he's certainly going to make the call here. Maybe the turn, Brower, if he fires a big enough bet, will get this guy to fold. And maybe Brower will even spike a queen. It is Friday morning now, which means that we are in the freeze-out period. So how does that change play? Well... It's the freeze-out period. It's the time that now you can't rebar back into the tournament. Your chips are gone, Caitlin. Here, we no longer have the option of staying in the tournament. Once your chips disappear, it's home time for you. A part of the tournament I know very well. <laughs> anyway, so they both now have turned flush draws. Browers is not as strong as Suns. But for Brower, he would actually like that too. Quite. I'm sure Top Top's feeling really sick. He would have turned a set of threes. But... Sun now with top pair and nut flush draw. Well, if he wasn't letting go on the flop, any chance that Brower was going to get him off on the turn certainly disappeared in that card. Cool. So Sun Thank makes you. the call. So now Brower. Whoa, good. what a card for Sun. Top two pair. He knows he's good now. And he moved all in. Put the red lights on. Right, so Brower looking very nice. confused and... He's trying to put on a bit of a performance as to how he, his big hand just got completely smashed by that ace in the river. The red lights are on and Ryan Brower has to think very carefully. He can't re-raise. He's got no option to push him off the hand. It's either a call or a fold. Well, he's certainly not calling with queen high. Well, we would hope not. Nine. Well, how's that? He just said to him, have you got ace nine? Another luck like, uh, like and backhand. You have ace ten. <laughs> Me? <laughs> But I have a pair of queens. I had you beat the whole way. Well, there you go. That's exactly the hand that Brow was representing. It was queens, kings, or aces. Well, obviously, you can't represent aces, yeah, because the aces hit him straight in the yeah, face. I don't know in this hand I will become solid. Yeah. So it's queens or kings. <laughs> he just said I had queens. I knew that it's chips. And the ace came and smashed him. So Brow is putting on a proper Hollywood here. Tried to give the rest of the table the perception that he was only playing the absolute gold. And that's all for table image, so that people think that he's not playing with well, rubbish. Well, that's the point. I mean, if it did get to showdown somehow, and he was shown to be bluffing here, certainly at a later stage in the tournament, when he does pick up a big hand, he may get paid off on it. So he's, this is just pure Hollywood here to uh, to uh, give the rest of the table, as well as Sun, the indication that he's letting go of a massive hand. I cannot tell you my car. You show me if I fall. <laughs> <laughs> But what's interesting is Brower put him straight on his hand. He said, do you have ace nine? <laughs> Gives it up eventually. Ace nine. That's true. Ace nine. Yeah. Either that or ace eight. And that's what separates Brower from the rest of us halfwits in the community. The man just picks you on your hand. What chance do you have? Anyway, so here he is, the Indian B.A. Barakas. Jay Suku, king of bling. Yeah, man. And he's very good friend, uh, Booker on his left hand side, they're very good friends. And so are Conrad and Lolly for that matter, very good mates. Conrad, just show on your turn three blocks, Conrad getting instructions from the dealer. Alright, so Lolly Jackson will pick up uh, Big Slick AK. He'll make the Suku call. Brower now, King Queen off suit. Will also come along a little bit. There's a lot of players at this table with sunglasses, Dave. Just a fashion statement, or is there a reason behind that? Uh, it's very bright in this idiot room. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously, these guys uh, are trying to get as much of an edge on what is a very difficult table already. They both spiked the King, Brower, and Lollipop. And, um, you know, you know, the eyes are the biggest tells. They're the ones that you can't really protect the eyes and the heartbeat. And from these guys, the players, the Browers, the Conrad Kutzers, the Lambertis, you know, these are the guys. The gu these are the kinds of guys at a table that you don't want looking into your soul through your eyes and trying to get a tell on you. I mean, if Brower needs to wear sunglasses, you've got to understand that it is obviously a reason for for some kind of protection. Anyway, it was Lolly who bet out Ace King, and it was Brower who called. Now Lolly will check Ace King, allowing Brower to bet it. Five and a half thousand, Lolly. Cool. Brower will bet five and a half thousand. Big bet. Lolly won't let go of AK here. Lolly, check your bet. Check. Lolly playing this nice and slowly, but that club is an interesting card. It might stop him. 
I'm King, a donkey. You have King Jack, but I check. So Ryan Brow is red, Lolly Jackson Don't for King it. Jack, which is yeah. almost lucky for him because he <laughs> thought he was ahead, which he wasn't. Could have lost a lot more money. Yeah, he says I got away cheap. That's exactly the point.